following PowerPoint is what the world has been polluted with and what is causing it. 90% of diseases are caused by an oligarchy of bankers which had first convinced the nations to borrow money in order to run the nations. After the beheading of Charles I on January 30, 1649, which was ordered by the Jewish bankers in Amsterdam, it was one of the conditions of lending the government of England money to run the United Kingdom. Thank you, Oliver Cromwell. The Bank of England had fallen to the grasp of the Rothschild family. Rome had proven the prosperity a nation could achieve when a currency is not based on precious metals. Rome minted money based on copper and controlled the flow into the public sector. The demise of Rome came about when gold became its currency, setting the stage for endless wars in its lust for precious metals. By then, the Pharisee Babylonian priests via Jerusalem, which had infiltrated Rome, and by 70 AD were the driving force behind the destruction of Jerusalem, and specifically the looting of the treasury of the temple. From that point onwards, gold was sought after by nations capturing treasuries, looting the ever-dwindling gold reserves, giving the victor dominance by their expanding purchase power. Foreign armies could be rented, organised by the bankers we know as the Rothschild Khazar today. They, driven by the same religion that regarded all non-Jews as animals with hands placed on the earth by God, GD, to serve them, the Zionist Jews. We fast forward to the American War of Independence. The Rothschild Pharisee Jews made a deal with King George III. The Rothschild bankers hired Russian Hessian soldiers for 50 cents a day, then rented the soldiers to England for a 100% markup. These Russian soldiers, draped in British uniforms, were dispatched to America, but was never intended to win the War of Independence. A far more sinister reason behind the war existed, and that was Zionism. They were also paid a premium for every soldier killed, and once the English General Cornwallis had been defeated by Washington, the truth of what was behind the war was revealed. The American colony had been set up. The Boston Tea Party gave the English an excuse to declare war as America refused to pay taxes in gold demanded by George III. The colony began issuing their own currency, with only the wealth of the nation as collateral, bringing prosperity to the people. This is how money, not backed by gold or silver, is the greatest secret of preventing prosperity. A nation issues money. The citizens are paid for projects like building a port, bridges or buildings. These projects increase the value of the nation beneficial to all citizens. Like a barren farm becomes valuable when the farmer's work develops its produce. The English, however, was not after American taxes, as General Cornwallis would point out to Washington. It was all about religion. In a book written three years after this famous meeting, Cornwallis laid it out for Washington. He said that America was to become a bastion of freedom as a world example that would draw the overpopulation of Europe to the land of the free, searching for a better life. At the same time, the Zionist Bible would be taught in all churches, making every facet of American life centred around Freemasonry. Cornwallis's task was to put on a show. The English never intended to win the war. The new nation was being set up to achieve a victory that even today is not known to the world. It was all about defeating Jesus. After the English defeat, Charles Cornwallis informed George Washington that it, what it was all about. He said that America was to become a bastion of freedom, becoming a world example that would draw the overpopulated, starving masses of Europe to the land of the free. He told Washington it was a 200-year plan. The oppression of people in Europe drove the starving masses, crippled by the gold standard to search for a better life. And so America was set up to defeat Jesus, for at the same time the Zionist Bible would be taught in all Jew churches making every facet of American life centred around the secret 
occult of Freemasonry proclaiming Jesus while worshipping Lucifer. The King James 1611 Freemason Bible was assembled by 47 Freemason scholars under Francis Bacon some 165 years earlier. Freemasonry was itself dominated and orchestrated by Zionists that had a far more reaching plan to achieve world domination by controlling currency. Its weapon was and is a religion via an endless war machine which had been set in motion in Rome that today was taken control of oil producing nations which had foolishly demanded real gold instead of worthless paper printed by the USA today. The worthless paper printed by the USA came about after London bankers took over the Federal Reserve in 1913. Then by 1933 had established a private banking system creating paper money based on the fiat imaginary currency, ignoring the dwindling gold reserve. What is not spoken of is the Jesus factor, the Zionist beast kept secret that is so powerful and fearful to the Zionists it had to be controlled from the pulpits. No matter what window of time we research, the same truth is suppressed. A force so powerful, the 14th Protocol of the Elders of Zion states plainly, we shall forbid Christ. Oddly, the entire orchestration of history is to prevent a solitary man, who they state absolutely is a man that they will forbid. If it were simply a religious figure, they would not say the word forbid. The word means prevent, prohibit, ban, bar, outlaw, stop, hinder. What? The second coming of Jesus. But that is the tip of the iceberg. Jesus never said he was coming back at all. That's right, Jesus said he had to go, for if he did not leave, the Comforter would not come. Jesus made it clear that when the Comforter comes, he will teach the world all things, judge sinners and those who do not believe in who the Comforter is, Yahweh. Christians have been devoured by the Freemason Bible as it dominates all governments, most opening with the Lord's Prayer. To understand what the Comforter is, we have to look at what Jesus said, which was that he, Jesus, and the Father are one, and all things come from the Father. Jesus was born and lived one, two, three, four, five days, from birth to resurrection. June the 17th, 2 BC to April the 5th, 33 AD. The Father and Jesus were one, means Yahweh Almighty God was the soul of Jesus and it is he that is the comforter today, Yahweh. One word explains it all, a word that is never mentioned by the churches. And why would they, being worshippers of Lucifer behind closed doors, while preaching Jesus? They do not mention the cures for cancer or AIDS or malaria or diabetes, yet these are not only curable but are invented or perpetrated, perpetuated by the churches regardless of the churches subdivided into, yes, 36,000 Jesus-worshipping denominations. And the word that is never mentioned is reprove. Quoting John 16:8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Reprove in the Greek Dictionary 1651. To confute, admonish, convict, convince, tell a fault, rebuke. The word reprove is found in 19 verses of the King James 1611. We have to focus on the 1611 because it was authorised by an anointed king. Copyright laws demand that a translation must be significantly altered from the original to obtain a right to sell the Bible. This is a manoeuvre allowing a manipulation of scripture. An anointed king, King James, was crowned upon the sacred stone of destiny, Jacob's pillow. This made James a Scotsman, the first true king of England. He was the genetic line of David by the daughter of King William the Lion. Margaret Scotland, who married William Marshall. English kings anointed upon the same stone were pretenders to the throne as only the true genetic line can be anointed. Christ, custodian of the throne of David, reserved for Christ. 
James's son, Charles I, was beheaded by the order of the Zionist moneylenders in Amsterdam, a condition they demanded from the English Parliament for lending money to the English Treasury. And of course, they hacked off his head on January the 30th, 1649. One word explains it all. Reprove, and only God can judge, condemn, or forgive sin. The supposed representatives of God push the Lord of the Old Testament as a vengeful law-giving God, while Jesus condemned it, saying, No man has seen God, nor has heard God. If you have seen God, you have seen me. Churches do not mention the cures for cancer or AIDS or malaria or diabetes, etc. Yet these are not only curable, but they are invented or perpetuated by the powers behind governments and its churches, regardless of the churches, once again subdivided into, yes, 36,000 denominations, all say nothing. Jesus came and revealed he was Yahweh in the flesh and said the Comforter could not come unless he die on the cross. Then as the Holy Ghost would be reborn after entering the womb of the most royal woman in a new baby, sired by the most royal man, a marshal, and she a go lightly of the son of King William, Henry, Go largely. The Comforter was Jesus, who said he, God, would send another Comforter. The churches must forbid Christ. John 14.26 But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Comforter in the Greek dictionary is 3875, parakletos, an intercessor, consoler, advocate. The temple of God is the earth, therefore we can find where Christ, the Holy Ghost of Jesus, must be reborn to. What is undeniable is the wonder of a solar eclipse, the precision of the Great Pyramid mentioned by Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 19, verses 19 and 20. Even here, the value of these two verses in Hebrew gematria is the same number as the height of the structure up to the missing, rejected capstone. The capstone is missing because it is rejected, being too large to fit, being larger than the prepared location known as the summit platform. The pyramid is a Bible in stone and as a structure perfect in orientation and dimensions. Now Bible means book. So the pyramid is the book and only God knows how to read it, which is what he's been doing. The pyramid, it predates all modern religion, yet predicts these will arise and take the kingdom, then be overturned by Christ. Therefore, as a solar eclipse, a lunar eclipse, and stars would be signs Jesus predicted, telling us a baby would be reborn and he would be the Holy Ghost. And when his kingdom comes, will be the comforter and teach you all things but only after he judges the world. <laughs>